Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about my closet makeover. This video has been a very long time in the making. It's taken us a lot longer than we anticipated to actually finish this closet. There were a lot of challenges along the way. We were on lockdown at the beginning of the year, which made getting materials very, very difficult. We really struggled as well to find someone to fit the door and there were just a lot of obstacles to overcome, um, but we are finally pretty much there. I'm so happy with how it's turned out. Just like my other closet, if you saw that video, everything here is from Ikea, and then Dan did some customization. So we did vlog the process, and because it's taken us so long, the vlog footage pretty much spans the entirety of a year. So you will see it in various different stages. So I will show you guys that, and then I'm also gonna ask Dan some questions so we can share the details of what we did. So. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. So I will cut away to the vlog footage in a second, but as a little bit of a background to the room, we started off with a fairly blank slate and I did want this to be a multi-purpose room. So I did want it for kind of bag and shoe storage, but I also wanted to have a little vanity area here and also have it functional for YouTube videos as well. With that in mind, um, we kind of tried out a few layouts, but ultimately decided on the layout that you see here with the bags and the shoes lining the wall. Dan also did paneling all the way around the room as well so he did a lot of DIY hacks and I'm just so so thrilled with how it turned out I think he did such an amazing job for the units we did do everything from Ikea but we had to use a combination of systems so we used the pack system for the shoes and then we ended up using the billy bookcases for the handbag units just because it didn't really make sense in terms of the dimensions to use all packs so we had to mix and match but I'm really happy with how it turned out so very happy we did decide to go for the billy bookcases in terms of the cost it was all very affordable so the units I think came to under 1500 pounds we added on a little bit for the customization but that wasn't too much at all and then our only other kind of bigger expense is the door and then getting someone to fit that and build out the door frame but most people won't have that expense obviously it was kind of a unique situation having an ensuite without a door so in terms of the actual units I do think it was less than 1500 pounds and I just love the look so I will share now how we did it the vlog footage as I mentioned starts right at the beginning of the year so it's kind of way back when and then it carries through right through to present day okay so today we are tackling this other wall um, I did decide to go with built-in units after all or built-in Ikea um, so that is what we slash Dan is doing today I'll be doing the shelves I think but um the main units pretty much him but yeah excited to see it come together Okay, so we are making some progress. Um, Realised that I totally forgot to order wallpaper, which is absolutely my bad. So I'm going to have to do that. Try to remember which wallpaper it is as well, which is easier said than done. Um, but we have two of the units up and Dan is working on the third. There are going to be three in the corner and then the customization begins. Okay, so as a little update, this is where we've gotten to. Can you see the snow on the window? It's like crazy outside. Um, but yes, Dan has kind of finished putting up the shell units. Obviously, um, all the shelves are not in there, but we want to wait to do that until we get the wallpaper. So we have taken off the uh, skirting board right there. Um, I don't know, I think we're gonna have to like fill some of it in, but we're obviously not gonna paint it because we are planning on wallpapering. We want a wallpaper because that's what we've done with the other units. Um, but I think we're just gonna try and wallpaper the wall directly. So I think that should be arriving tomorrow, fingers crossed. And then we'll be able to get started with customizing the units. Dan has also gotten started with the dado rail. So we have the masking tape up on the wall and that's basically just kind of mark out where we want the panels to go. But it has already fixed in most of the dado rail. So it goes all the way around. Um, as you can see, we have kind of bits of masking tape everywhere just to mark things. But yeah, it is kind of getting started at least. I don't want to say getting there, um, but yeah, we, we have at least made a start. 
Okay, so this is the update. The uh, strips of wood are on and so we have to paint that wall. It hasn't been done yet because we just, we need the curtains to go up and we need to figure out what's happening with the radiator cover. So this wall is a TBC, um, but we thought we'd go ahead and just paint these walls first. And then spanning around, so the bag shelves are kind of completed, well-ish, I mean they're up and obviously populated with bags. I went for a kind of um, colour-coded arrangement, um, I really like the way it's turned out. First time I've ever done that and I'm actually very on board with the rainbow colours now. Um, there's one kind of little space there for a black bag and I've just popped my Prada one in there temporarily. Um, but as you can see, we still do not have a door for the ensuite and we've actually just been storing all the tools there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Um, Dan needs to finish up the panelling as I just mentioned and then also the customization. So there wasn't a whole ton of point in carrying them all downstairs. So we were just storing them in there temporarily, but I think the door is getting installed next month, which I am very, very excited about. And that is also when Dan is going to be finishing the customization, hopefully achieving that kind of built-in look. So we're not quite there, but um, we are kind of making slow but steady progress. These things just take so long um, generally, but especially during a lockdown, obviously. But I'm very excited to see the finished product. So here we are with the kind of accessory shoe room. So Dan, as you can see, has already made a start with the customizations. It's taken us a long time to get to the stage um, just because we were waiting on the wood, which we weren't able to get until lockdown lifted. So we're finally out of lockdown now. So Dan was able to get that. So this side is completely untouched at the moment. Everything is moved out, obviously, for handbag and shoe safety reasons. And Dan is basically filling in the gaps, I guess, with wood and then he's going to block it in, if you can see the side there, and then we're going to paint. We did wallpaper the back of the shoe sections. We didn't do that on the handbag units. And to be honest, I was thinking about it, but when I looked into it, the wallpaper lead time was like, I don't know, it was like 20 weeks or something ridiculous. So I just decided to paint it. I don't really mind just because the wallpaper is so faint. It's like, I don't think it's gonna look drastically different. So we did just paint the wall at the back, brilliant white. Uh, the shade we used was Chantilly Lace by Benjamin Moore. Just a really pretty crisp white. And Dan is going to crack on with all the customization. You can kind of see, so at the moment, it's all just like very, very wobbly and unstable. And then kind of spanning round. If I do that here, it's like ridiculously solid. So it's not only for looks, but also kind of, you know, functionally, it just makes them much sturdier. And he did actually learn from last time as well, so he told me, um, because last time we used quite thin um, sheets of wood, whereas this time he went much thicker, so you can see like this is really quite thick. Um, and that was, I think, just to add more stability and also to get straighter cuts with the wood as well. And you have that kind of floating piece there, which, if I'm perfectly honest, I don't know why it's there, but I'm sure there is a good reason. Little progress update, so... It feels like we're really, really getting there. Um, so we have the coving all on and that's like all around the room, if you can see that. So it is everywhere. And then all the strips are on. Um, we have primed and painted, not finished painting yet. Uh, we have a little bit more filling to do. And then we need to, I think just one coat, we're hoping to get away with just one coat. Um, but I mean, you definitely see the structure is there and I am so happy with how it's looking. So here we want to be filling in these little holes as well, but not going to do that until I kind of put all my bags back. I know that sounds like a funny way of doing it, but I just want to be extra sure that the shelves are kind of staying there because once you fill in the holes, it's not going to be fun to unfill them. So definitely want to be really sure this is the Billy bookcase. So we can't use plugs because they don't do plugs with Billy. So we're having just use filler. So it is a bit more of a permanent solution. So this is the wider view. As you can see, the combing does go all the way around 
and Dan did finish up the paneling as well. So we just have to paint that and then repaint this wall. This wall had been left out of the original paneling because we were waiting on that radiator cover. Because as you can see, it kind of goes into it. So we didn't know how wide the radiator cover was gonna be. So we wanted to wait for that. And so then he was able to finish up that. So so I have to do the painting of the wall and the paneling and then a little bit more filling and painting but I think we are really getting quite close and obviously the door as well, but we do have someone coming to look at that today. Okay, so as a little update, we have now filled this in. We weren't originally going to do that, um, but when we painted just the timber strips, you could see the grain and it kind of contrasted with this bit. So it didn't look as good as we wanted it to. So we improvised and then I've just filled this in and sanded it down and now it's completely smooth. So ready for painting just a wider view so you know what we're talking about so you can see it's all being filled in in the middle and now we're going to tackle the painting so it all looks nice and uniform so here is the finished closet we are pretty much there um we did do a few finishing touches over the weekend um, and then the flooring is the only kind of remaining thing we do have to sand parts of that down and then varnish it but i think that's going to be a january job rather than a november december one but everything else is pretty much finished and i am super super happy with how it's turned out then as you can see we've also filled in the holes as well i mentioned that we can use plugs so we did have to do that manually um, but i'm really glad we did because i do just think it kind of gives it that finishing touch and then spanning around, this is what the rest of the room looks like. So as you see, it's kind of a multi-purpose area. So I have my vanity area there where I get ready. So there's all my makeup products, but then I also have my little filming setup right there with my ring light. The paneling and the flooring really made such a big change. I don't think I took any video footage of what it looked like before, but I did take a photo. So I will insert those. Um, so it used to have just gray carpets and a kind of off white color on the walls. And then we changed the carpet to wooden flooring and then did the paneling and then painted everything white. And I just think it makes such a difference in terms of how bright it looks and how it just really opens up the space. And then Dan kind of carried on that paneling all the way at least where there was kind of space on the walls and then we did change the door as well so it does kind of match and then we did actually spray paint the mirror as well because that was originally a gunmetal i couldn't find something similar that i wanted in gold and we have some really good gold paint so we just spray painted there and i love the way it turned out and then the big update is that we finally have a door i am so thrilled about this it took months and months um the person we originally booked kind of fell through so then we had to find someone else and then he was booked up for a really long time then we had a delay with the doors because there seems to be a shortage of everything in the uk so it was yeah just very very challenging to get that sorted um, because it wasn't just the door but it was the door frame as well that needed to be built out I am very happy with how it turned out and also to have some privacy on the bathroom as well because yeah, that was just a weird situation. So there is an ensuite beyond that, but it's now happily blocked off, which is very, very nice. So that was kind of the finishing touch that we were waiting for. Um, yeah, I'm just really, really happy that that's done and it just kind of makes everything look a little bit more complete. All right, so I have the man himself who did all of this wondrous work. Um, so could you explain what you did? Because I got some feedback in the last video that um, it was useful, but they wanted kind of no specifics more. So can you kind of talk a little bit more in detail about like what you did and how you did and what you used? Okay, um, so the base was Ikea stuff. So if you look around here you'll see where the holes are filled in that give it away that it is an ikea wardrobe to begin with but ikea wardrobes are pretty flimsy so when you move them they rock they don't look that great but they're a really good starting point so what we did was put up the wardrobe uh, put up the shelves and then i used timber to secure it onto the wall and then also put other timber strips on which you might be able to make out here with that like line running through. So that'll be a strip of timber that I would have cut to size with the floor and the ceiling. Put that in the middle here, everywhere you see where it looks padded out. Um, and then once I've created that block here, yeah, I've then used some kind of like plywood sheets, which I've cut to size. Um, so they'll be the same as the sides of the wardrobe. Stuck that onto here. So I've used a nail gun as well as no more nails. So that creates that kind of block effect. So 
actually in between here it's hollow whereas here that's like wood going through so that becomes really solid there i've secured the actual wardrobes themselves onto the back of the wall so like it's not moving it's super solid um i've then used i actually took the original skirting board we have i think so emmy if you show that so i took that original skirting board and then the one that was on this wall and then i ran that through a table saw so it became that flat edge so it looked more in keeping with the sharp edges that were on the ikea wardrobe um and then i put the molding that you can see all around the room so i just ran that around the top um the molding is like just really inexpensive stuff right yeah it's super cheap it's lightweight it's like made of polystyrene um so like they are really super lightweight you can just stick it up there i use a nail gun as well to make sure that it stays where it needs to be and then we just go over that with paint um and so what you're talking about over there that's the same as what was here and that was that like little plank of wood that i asked you about earlier right you can't see it anymore but that's all hollow yeah so like in between here is hollow but here isn't I don't know if you can tell the difference of that noise right. so like this is a timber strip that runs all the way down the front but it's probably only about that thick but then i do the same at the back but just with individual strips because you don't need the front you, you obviously don't want holes here so you have that running down the front whereas on the back you just have something the same width put at various points so i'll probably do it around about there and around about there so when i then put the plywood sheet on this side which you can see is quite thick um, it runs to the same level, so you don't want it kind of wonky coming out at a different angle or being floppy. So that's why that's secured to the piece of wood there. So I will have screwed that in. So it and again, this is just like a, ho a hollow wall. Like this is hollow, whereas this bit, that's where the, the thick wood meets. The thick piece of wood attached with no more nails. Uh, so I, I will have used, no, it, it depends on which bit. So it would have been a combination of no more nails and screwed in. Um, but generally a lot of screws more than anything, as long as they could be hidden afterwards. Okay. And that, I think that's pretty much it. Can you talk through panelling as well, please? Uh, you mean the other ones? Yes. Yeah. Um, honestly, so these were just... I just realised that when you were talking, you have paint on your t-shirt, but anyway. <laughs> so you can just get these strips and they just come like in long lengths of like 2.4 metres, usually or eight foot. Um, and they're all decorative. And you just take the strips, um, put them through a mitre or a 45 degree angle. So I put no more nails down the strip on the back of the timber and then I put them on the wall and I've nail gun them where I wanted them to be let them dry should only have to do it for a couple of hours but I left it for a couple of days and then once they're done pull out the nails paint you might need a bit of cork to fill in various gaps especially when it is more decorative molding but yeah that's pretty much it and we did actually like quite a bit of research about the panelling because we liked the effect but we couldn't figure out how people did it because we thought it was literally like sheets of wood like on the wall and then you know you had the panelling around it um, but apparently you only actually do that if the walls are really uneven and you're doing it to mask it whereas if you have completely um like plain straight walls if that makes any sense it is you can just use like the decorative strips and you really can't see so yeah you can do it like that i've seen some other people who do it so like especially they might do it so like the bottom layer comes out a bit more yes so like i yeah. follow some people on facebook who do this kind of thing all the time and they will go in and put like a massive sheet of plywood so it'll like come out a bit further and then they'll put something else on top of that but in terms of what you wanted i didn't really think that was necessary it seemed to get nope. the same effect um we'd probably a better finish anyway because the walls are all quite smooth and nice so going over them with something else wouldn't really have made too much sense Anything that you would have done differently or that was particularly tricky that people should know? No, I would say that like there were, there were much more lessons learned with the other one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the drawers and things like that made it more complicated anyway. This was a fairly simple build. I think actually probably, and I don't know if you're going to pick it up on here, but like when I recessed the middle bits a little bit to create that kind of 3D effect, you didn't like that. Yes, because you think... could see the um, like the grain of wood. Yeah. And I think I probably should have checked what you wanted there before going in and doing something. Uh, I was kind of just doing it off the fly anyway. And I was like, oh, that looks good. I'll continue doing it. But actually it probably would have made more sense to figure out what you actually wanted before doing it. Because I could have done other things that would have been a lot easier to make it smooth on the front had I have known that was what you wanted. Okay. Um, other than that, not much. Yeah, this one was fairly straightforward. Okay, um, will you help me list everything out in the description section for everyone at home? I will. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Okay. Is that it? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Thank you. 
So that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it, you found it useful. I will try and include all details of what we did and what we used in the description section below. If you have any other questions then feel free to leave a comment and either I will try and answer or I will try and get Dan to answer. If you enjoyed the video please do give us a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel please do subscribe. I make videos every single week. If you missed my other closet video and you wanted to watch that I will also link that here. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.